welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be creating this retro style vector badge using only Illustrator. It uses all free fonts and we're going to make all the shapes used in it from scratch. So to get started, let's create a new document by going File, New. And my document's going to be a little larger than the, the badge size, just so we have some room to play around with. So my sizing is a width of 7 inches, a height of 5 inches. It's Orientation is landscape, and if you toggle down this little advanced tab, uh, my color mode is CMYK because it's print, and my resolution is 300 ppi, which is the print standard, so I'm going to hit OK. And once I have this, I've kind of already got some color presets, so I'm going to paste those in. And if you'd like to copy the exact builds, I'll open up my color palette so you can see. So the off-white color is right here. Here's the orange. This is what I'm going to call the charcoal brown color, and here's my blue color. So to establish the base shape of this badge shape, I'm going to create a rectangle first. In that rectangle, I'm going to hit M on my keyboard, double click. That rectangle is going to be three and a half inches wide by one and a quarter inches high. And it's going to be colored orange, so I'm going to hit I on my keyboard and hit this orange right here. Next, I'm going to use my guidelines, so I need my rulers, so I'm going to hit Command-R if you're on a Mac, or Control-R if you're on a PC. And I'm going to drag a rule, um, I'm just going to click on this top ruler, and I'm going to drag until I hit one and a half right here. And then I'm going to drag my shape up until I hit that. And then I'm going to drag another one right below it. Now I need the exact same space above the rectangle and below the rectangle, so I can put that peak in that valley in. So I'm going to use a uh, half an inch for that measurement, so I'm going to drag a guideline so it hits one right here. And since this last guideline is at two and three quarters, I'm going to drag this to three and a quarter. Okay, so now I have to put the points on my rectangle, which are going to go right in the middle. And I can kind of cheat this by, if I zoom in, I'm hitting Command Plus on my keyboard or Control Plus on a PC. So I'm going to select my rectangle. I'm going to hover above this little node here. I'm going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard, and then I'm just going to click. And that puts a node there. So I'm going to hit V to select this whole thing again. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm going to hover over this node, hit the plus sign on my keyboard, and then this might come up sometimes, and this will happen if you're just a little off from the edge of the shape, so I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to zoom in a little further so that doesn't happen again. So with my shape select, I'm going to hover over this node again, hit the plus sign on my keyboard, and hit click. OK, so if I zoom out, now I'm going to hit the A key on my keyboard, I'm going to find that node, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to drag it up, and as it's dragging, I'm going to hold shift until I hit this top guideline. Do the same thing for the bottom with my a key, I'm, I've got my direct selection tool, I'm going to click on that node, drag, hold shift until I hit that bottom guideline. So now I have the base of um, what this badge is going to be. And if you ever want to see it without the guides, all you have to do is hit command or control colon if you're on a PC, and that'll hide your guides. If you want them back, just hit command colon or control colon again. Okay, so. Because I'm going to have a ribbon, I'll show you, this ribbon runs all the way through, so it's above this outer shape and below the orange in this uh, dashed, almost thread line right here. So I need this to be a shape instead of a stroke. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the Offset Path tool in Illustrator, which is actually pretty easy to use. So I'm just going to select this shape, so this is what it's going to be based off of. I'm going to go up to Object, Path, Offset Path. I'm going to type in a positive 0.08 inches and hit OK. Now you can see where my original shape is, and this new shape is the exact same distance away from the previous shape on all sides, which is exactly what I want. But I want it to be this charcoal brown color, so I'm going to hit I on my keyboard, and I'm going to click this charcoal brown. So that's what I want. Okay, so now we're going to make this dashed line right here, and since it's inside the orange, we're going to have to um, go Object, Path, offset path and make this a negative 0 0.08 inches. I'm going to hit OK. And since this is going to need a stroke instead of a fill, I'm going to come up to my color palette and since the f it's filled right now, I'm going to hit this None button right here. I'm going to click where the stroke is. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard and then I'm going to hold Shift and click on this charcoal brown. So now I've got this charcoal brown as my stroke. 
So now it needs to be a dash, so I'm going to go into my stroke palette, I'm going to type in point 0.8 points, and I want a rounded cap and a rounded corner. I'm going to check this dash check button, and I'm going to keep this as dash two point and gap two points, and that's exactly what I want. Okay, so now I need my ribbon that passes all the way through. So in order to make the ribbon, I'm going to hit the M key on my keyboard again. I'm kind of going to freehand um, the height of it, which it's going to be a skinny ribbon, so that looks good to me. And this is going to need a fill of this blue color. So kind of like what I did before with this orange badge to make the peak in the valley, I need to put a little node in here on the edge and then knock it back a little bit to make it look like a ribbon. So I'm going to zoom into this area. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hover over this node. I'm going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click. So now I've got this node. And while this node is actually already selected because I just put it there, I can hit the left arrow key on my keyboard. I'm going to tap it five times. One, two, three, four, five. OK, so now that looks like a ribbon. And because I'd need that notch on the other side, in order to cheat this a little bit, I can click, hold Alt, drag, and then hold Shift so it stays straight. So whenever I hold Alt, that's making a copy. So this needs to be on the other side, so I need to reflect it over my vertical axis. So I'm going to right click on this, transform, reflect, and select. make sure vertical is selected, and then I'm going to hit OK. Alright, so I'm going to pull this over just a little further, and I'm going to make this one, so you can see we've got two shapes right now. I'm going to make it into one shape by selecting both of them and going into my Pathfinder Toolbox, which if you don't see your Pathfinder Toolbox over here, you can get to it by going Window, Pathfinder, and that'll bring it up. And I'm just going to hit this Unite button. And now they are one shape. But you can see where they join. I've got these little points here, and I don't want them there. So I'm going to hit the hyphen key on my keyboard, and that's going to make up... Um, activate my pen tool that is the delete anchor point tool. So I'm going to click on all these anchor points to get rid of them. And now I've got a nice clean shape. So I'm going to position this right in the middle of this badge. In order to kind of center align all of these shapes, I'm going to select them all. And up here you can toggle over. It's the horizontal align center button. I'm going to click it and now everything, the amount of space of this ribbon over here is the same as over here. So as you saw before, this ribbon needs to be above this outer charcoal brown, but below the orange. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select it. And there's two ways you can do this. The first way that I usually use is I hold my command button and I keep tapping my open bracket button, bracket button until it goes to where I need it to go. So I have to hit it a few times, but it's there. The other thing you can do is right click, transform, or arrange, and send to back. And now it's behind everything, but since this is the furthest back, I can go Arrange, Bring Forward. Actually, these are all the way to the back, so I have to do it a few times. So you can keep doing this, um, Arrange, Bring Forward, or I can just do Command and my Close Bracket to bring it forward until it gets in the same position. So that's right where I need it. And now I'm going to put in this little shadow right here to make it look like it's actually behind the orange. And you can... You can see that right here. So I'm going to drop those in. So I'm going to zoom in here and hit M on my keyboard to activate my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle that doesn't go all the way to this brown shape, but almost. And I'm going to color this, this charcoal brown, and I'm going to add a transparency of 50% to it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I need this on the other side too, so I'm just going to select, hold Alt, drag, hold Shift to make it straight, and let go. Okay, so now all we really need to do is add our text. Uh, to, be, to make things a little quicker, I'm just going to grab this um, graduation cap from this one and put it in. And I'll put uh, links below in the video description of where I got all the fonts I'm about to use, so you can get them too for free. So I'm going to type in class of. And if you ever type in lowercase and you want it to be all uppercase like I do right now, you can go type, change case, uppercase, and that way you don't have to retype it. So this is going to be this off-white color. And if I come into my character palette, I'm going to make this Novacento Sans Wide Normal. It's going to be 11 points. 
with a tracking of 200. I'm just going to kind of line things up. Okay, and now I'm going to put class of, and this is going to say 20. I'm going to center it up by I, and then I'm going to hold Alt, Shift, Drag, and type in 16. Okay, and this is going to actually be colored that charcoal brown color. Okay, and I just noticed we missed putting the shadow on this ribbon, which you can notice right here. So you can kind of see it's, it's a little bit of a funky shape, but it's really easy to make. So let's drop that in right now. So I need to make a copy of my ribbon. So I'm going to hold Alt, drag, hold shift so it's straight. And I'm actually going to hold my A key. I'm going to select all of these points on the left. I'm going to delete them all. And then I'm going to hit the P key on my keyboard. So I have my pen tool. I'm going to click this top point. And then down here, anywhere really, as long as you can see my smart guides are lining up with the bottom, I'm just going to click right here. And then I'm going to click the bottom just to close the shape. So I have the filled shape. So this shape is going to be colored this charcoal brown. And if I drag it all the way up, um, it's just going to be a little bit below the ribbon that I have so it looks like a shadow. I'm going to send it all the way to the back so I can do um, arrange, send it back, or I can do the shortcut, shift, command, and then this open bracket. Either one will work. So now I'm going to hold my A key and I'm going to select this last note over here and I'm just going to drag it until I kind of hit this charcoal brown outer shape. And now it looks like the ribbon is coming off the page a little bit, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to select this, hold Alt, drag, hold Shift to make it straight, and now I'm going to right click, transform, reflect, vertical, and I'm just going to tap it, and that's exactly where I want it. Okay, let's finish up this text. So I'm going to um, type out 2016, and this is actually, this is going to be the off-white color again. It's going to be 88 points, it's going to have a tracking of 0, and it's going to be set in Homestead in line. Okay, so now the only thing we're missing are some little dividers, which I'll show you right here. we got to make these. So they're essentially just stretched out triangles, so the way that I make these is I grab my star tool, and usually your star should default like this, five points. So in order to make it a triangle, all you have to do is hit the down arrow on your keyboard and that'll reduce the number of points with however many times you hit it. So now I've got a triangle. So I'm just gonna kinda finagle this until I've got a straight line on my left side. I'm gonna fill this with the brown and see these extra points? I'm gonna get rid of those by hitting the hyphen key on my keyboard. So I have this delete anchor point tool. I'm just gonna click these anchor points so they're gone. And I'm gonna make this a little smaller. And you can see this bounding box that's kind of at an angle around my shape. I want it to be more like a, a straight up square. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit transform, reset bounding box. And now, now I can just take it and stretch it out and make it however skewed I want it to be. So, make this a little smaller. There we go. Alt, Shift, right click, transform, reflect, vertical. There we go. And if you want, I can group these by hitting Command G once both of them are selected and kind of selecting everything and hitting this horizontal align and now everything's aligned right down the center and that's it if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe i have new tutorials almost every single week thanks for watching